what are you so depressed about? I mean, other than the usual everything. I really don't want to talk about it. Well, if you're not going to tell me, how can we have a conversation in depth? A warm, rewarding, meaningful friendship. Of yours. <gasps> Why, Captain Butler, how you talk. It's just that today I realized that I was raised to be a failure. I was groomed for it. You know, there was a time when you could have said that to me, and I wouldn't have known what the hell you were talking about. Naturally, it all goes back to Evelyn and Walt. Oh, naturally. When doesn't it go back to Mom and Pop? Unfortunately, we all had an Evelyn and a Walt. The crumbs! Don't you love that word? Crumb? Oh, I love it. It's a real Barbara Stanwyck word. Call me a cab, you crumb! Well, I see all vestiges of sanity for this evening are now officially shot to hell. Oh, Donald, you're so serious tonight. You're fun-starved, baby. And I'm eating for two. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Evelyn and Walt syndrome... It's America's square peg and America's round hole. Oh, Christ. How sick analysts must get of hearing how Mommy and Daddy made their darling into a fairy. It's beyond just that now. Today I finally began to see how some of the other pieces of the puzzle relate to them. Like why I never finished anything I started in my life. My neurotic compulsion to not succeed. I realized it was always when I failed that Evelyn loved me the most. Because it displeased Walt, who wanted perfection. And so when I fell short of the mark, she was only too happy to make up for it with her love. So I began to associate failing with winning my mother's love. And I began to fail on purpose to get it. I didn't finish Cornell, I couldn't keep a job in this town, I simply retreated to a room over a garage and scrubbing floors in order to keep alive. Failure is the one thing with which I feel at home, because it's what I was taught at home. Killer whales is what they are! Killer whales! How many whales could a killer whale kill? A lot, especially if you get them when they were babies. Where'd you get this sweater? Oh, this clever little shop on the right bank called Hermes. I work my ass off for 45 lousy dollars a week scrubbing floors, and you waltz around throwing cashmere sweaters on them. Oh, uh, the one on the floor in the bathroom is by Kuna. I beg your pardon. You could get a job doing something else, you know. Nobody holds a gun to your head to be a charwoman. That is how you say your neuroses. But gee, and I thought it's why I was born. Besides, just because I wear expensive clothes doesn't necessarily mean they're paid for. That is how you say your neuroses. I'm a spoiled brat. So what do I know about being mature? The only thing mature means to me is Victor Mature, who is in all those pictures with Betty Grable. You're the type that gives faggots a bad name. And you, Donald, you are a credit to the homosexual. A reliable, hard-working, floor-scrubbing, bill-paying fag who don't owe nothing to nobody. I am a model fairy. Hmm. <laughs>